Luca Nation, your weekend PWCC Lucas Tigers and Bronze Oh My podcast. It feels like it's uh, it's been a century since you and I have had an episode together. Just the two of us, right? Just the two of us. And it's an episode that's coming on the heels of Premiere Ended. We have oh, yeah. Weekly. We have mm-hmm. Burbank Cards, a uh, big, big, big show next weekend. Um, Nationals kind of in the rearview mirror. Uh, are people buying, selling? What are they buying? So we'll discuss it all here. I think right. we would be remiss if we didn't start with Premier and kind of dovetail it into weekly. I'll start with one right off the bat. So in Premier, there was a PSA 10 Mahomes cage, red autograph. And I don't know if you saw in the weekly, there's an optic red with no autograph, PSA 10. You know which part I'm talking about, the color match? You do not. You got to show it to me. Optic I'll rookie? It is it optic what? Contenders? Like what? what optic what? Just optic. Just a regular right. optic like base? So, so we'll get into that. Let me take All a right, step cool. back. Yeah, we yeah. haven't had a show just us two for a long time. What's top of mind? What are you thinking about? Are you selling? Are you buying? Is there something that happened in the last week that you want to share? The floor is yours. You can popcorn it back at any moment. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm thrilled to be doing the PWC She Show PWCC show. Wow, there's a little tongue twister there. Um, after doing all the National Treasure stuff, right? Because okay. we've we've spoken to a lot of people, right? And a couple times we've heard... <clears throat> I'll ask you. To see if, if you're hearing the same stuff as, as I'm hearing. Um, we've heard from dealers. People who set up at the show, right? Yeah, there were tech issues. Yeah, there was blah, blah, blah. But what was the general consensus from the dealers who were there trying to make deals vis-a-vis the customers, the collectors trading, who were walking in. Trading, not a lot of buying. People were looking to trade their cards. People were coming up to the tables with cards. People were looking to sell their cards to the dealers, right? And that that was generally the gist of what a lot of folks who set up told us, right? So let's carry that forward, right? What, what does that mean? It means that there are people who are looking for liquidity, right? Why do you think that is, right? Because... Now PSA is getting their backlog, um, you know, cleaned up. A lot of group subbers getting their stuff back. Uh, we talked with PC, right? PC Sports Cards said they only have like two dozen or so, you know, PSA remaining subs. in the backlog, right? PSA subs. We know we only have one left from, you know, way back in the day, a, a small Pokemon one ourselves. Um, so, so to me, the weekly auctions that we're seeing now and maybe from now until the end of the year, per se, the, the last couple of weeks we've seen, what I view these as are a different opportunity than what will be in the PWCC auctions next mm-hmm. year. Yeah. You sure. know what like I mean? Maybe just, like a liquidation sale, Foreman Mills. And I guess really, look, we'll go through the stuff that's available. We'll go through the sales. We'll go through, you name it. We can talk about Premiere a little bit. And, I, and we, we have high-end stuff. We have low-end stuff to talk about. But I think it's, it's worth uh, a couple of minutes of the episode to chat with you because I, I think it's something, a thread you want to pull on, Sure. is I think maybe people are overlooking a lot of things that are for sale in this auction, thinking this is the new normal. Right. And I'll give you an example. And if you want to walk through it with me so I can show folks what we're doing here um, and kind of, you know, and kind of, you know, we can show them for the YouTube people and walk through. But I counted. Right. I counted. And when I looked today and remember, guys, we're recording this the day before the auction ends. So obviously things change. Right. But when I looked, I did a fun little thing. All right. I did a fun little thing. I, I did this by power buyer. So I went into the sort and filters. All right, and I sorted by lowest price, not highest. I we'll talk that. about some of the high ends by, by lowest price. And I hope I don't blow up your spot on this, but it's it's too wide of a net for to, to, to focus on anything specific. But by lowest price, I sort by this weekly auction only, the one that's ending mm-hmm. August twenty first, because you can search obviously ones that come in next week too. It'll narrow down your results, right? Um, I searched by um, by power buyer by lowest and then in my I, I did that and I clicked it and then in my search term I put PSA 10. Now you can put BGS 10, you could put BGS 95, you could put PSA 9, you could do all of them and, and really cast a wider net if you like, but I put PSA 10. And the reason is because of what we're talking about. One, I'm a PSA snob, right? But two, more importantly is a lot of people sent cards in last year to PSA that are not being sent in. 
And if you look, what's amazing about that search, that when I checked, there were 54 cards that didn't even have a bid yet. Yeah. Those are PSA 10s that don't even have the, 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 the minimum bid of $10. But where it gets even funnier is you can't grade a card for $18 with PSA anymore. They did that for a couple weeks leading up to the national. Maybe they come a little cheaper. Nat Turner did a, you know, a thing with, with Jeff, uh, Jeff Wilson, the sports card investor guy, you know, talking about when he's going to you know, roll out lower pricing. And then magically, Jeff Wilson the next week put a content up on his YouTube channel that was talking about cracking 50000 and subbing to PSA so that they can make more money. It's interesting how right after he sits down with PSA at the national, all of a sudden he's doing a crack BGS to PSA kind of content. Weird. Hmm. We can get into that in another episode, not during PSA, but I sometimes pull on the threads of the conspiracy okay. theories. I'll leave the hanky panky real deep dive to the, the other we, people. We have that. listeners that will go and run with it. So anyway, um, but you can't grade a card for eighteen dollars anymore PSA. But if you wanted to buy a PSA ten in this weekly auction, yep, there are currently six hundred and fourteen PSA tens, eighteen dollars or less. Wow. So so. 614 right now. Now, again, we're recording a day before the auction. Go ahead, please. So there's a, there's a lot to this, Cage. So first off, guys, we do have these like sponsorship episodes. I'll be straight up. But the money that I think we could make with just holding on to these tips and using them for ourselves, I think would, would far exceed. And here's why. That PSA 10 search is what I have been searching the last month. And because I actually feel that PWCC Weekly is now a little bit more competitive than it was four weeks ago, I've moved that search to eBay. And here's how I play it. Those PSA 10 are like throwing cards, right? Because when you're trying to Mm -hmm. make deals with people, you can sweeten the pie. We see price and card. So we're like, okay, this card's $10. But when you're doing a deal with someone, whether virtually, like through Instagram, Facebook, or you're at a show and you're doing a trade, an even trade, and you say, hey, I got this other one that I think you might like. Who's your favorite player? Or like, hey, my daughter or my son collects Kobe. And you just picked up a Kobe or a Jordan PSA 10. Not not anything crazy or cheap. Now you have trade bait. Now you have something to sweeten into the pie too. So there's so many ways to use these cards that you're absolutely right. Dude. And PSA 10, I'll add one more thing, Cage. We, we're not supposed to compare these cards as stocks, mm-hmm. but the closest thing to making – a card of stock is a PSA 10 slab. That's right. Not 100% any, right. Not a BGS 95. And even though we are sponsored by SGC, I don't think SGC 10s are there yet either. But you have that PSA 10, it turns it into a security. It turns it into a stock. It makes it way more liquid and way more tradable. And you're absolutely right. Because of the supply shock, you're seeing how many? 618 under 614. 614, 18 dollars or less. And it's not and it's in all categories. It's all categories, folks. I mean, you can't grade anything now. So let's just say you're sitting at home and you're a parent and your kid collects Pokemon cards. Some of our National Treasures guests talk about that, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. who is it? Oh, my kid loves Pokemon cards. You know, I got to buy Pokemon. It's shiny. They like the Pokemon cards. There are over 100 PSA 10 Pokemon cards in this weekly auction for $15 or less, right? $15 $15 or less, over 100 right now, Pokemon cards alone. You, you ever heard of Rafael Nadal? Never. Tell me about him. I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you're the I'm tennis a guy, right? I'm a guy through and through. Me too. It's all about Alcatraz, right? You got the rock. They turn the rock into a tourist dude, attraction. Cage is going to the U.S. Open. Cage, I am. Dude, glam, glam, glam the next two weeks. This guy's going to the Disney before. World. Disney I'm World for the next 10 days. And then U.S. Open. Whew. Sheesh. I went, I went to the Open as far back as August of 2008. And I'll remember going to that because the U.S. Open in August of 2008 on August 29th, 2008. Um, I remember going for two reasons. Number one, it was my wedding anniversary at, at the time. I was, I was married for exactly four years that day. But more importantly, that morning, I found out Leah was on the way. So pretty cool. Where, where did, where did they to, call you from? Went to the what U.S. Open. Your... You just called me, called me from the You're belly. The hey, I'm on the so way. I'm taking the train. The bad the part is right now. My, if my wife were here, what she would say is she wish she found out a day later because the U.S. Open, there's a lot of fun drinks there. You know what I mean? That just hold like – and then and that, and she can't. And she, uh, she, uh, maybe one or two, you know. But, but, but 
But Cage I, never I told you guys. Cage had a Martina Hingis twenty-four like by forty-eight Hingis. poster on his dorm room. She wall. was she was one of the original like yellers, right? Yeah. She made, she was anyway. So if you put in PSA ten Nadal, there is a two thousand three Net Pro International Series Nadal PSA ten card, also in that eighteen dollar or less bucket presently. Now I'm not saying that's where it's going to be. And now that we've shined the light on it, I like to start these off and talk about these, you know, huge cards, these Kobe exquisite autos. And we'll get there, the LeBron Golds and we'll get there. Three, um, three PSA ten Nadals that are currently as we're recording this four PM Saturday, August twentieth. Uh let's say twenty 20- thirty hours before the auction ends, there's three under eighteen bucks for there PSA. are there are seven PSA 10 LeBron James cards under $18 right now. Seven of them. So, real quick, and I'll add, I like and one's that. ones are really nice, like Dunruss, uh, you know, the Optic 2019 Fanatics version, and it's like a wavy one from Optic 19 with, you know, LeBron dunking. 15 bucks right now. I know it's an auction, I know it could change, but 2019 Optics, Fanatics, um, cool you know, there's dunking. There's a bunch of them. There's, I mean, there's, the, you know, Old Revolution ones. There's a couple of them. 2018, the Court Vision one from Status. I mean, there's just there's a lot there. You know, there right, to the right was the one there. The LeBron you, the you just showed it on the screen. The Fanatics ones is a little weird. So, so guys, right now there's a, a a little bit of a bloodbath in in NFTs, right? And I set oh Cage, yeah, Cage a screenshot, and there's a, a metric OpenSea, which is like the eBay or PWCC mm-hmm. of NFTs added, which is percent listed, right? Remember I said. And it's a way to see how many collectors are selling the current NFT. The same thing goes here. When this at PSA backlog catches up, the percent listed is going to fall off of a cliff. Yep. Because these are coming back and just being consigned everywhere. Eventually, that's just going to stop. And then the percent listed, the available supply of whatever is going to fall. So this was what I was talking to you about, right? So so you talked about you know Optic, the whole deal. Right, there are two Kobe's under eighteen dollars PSA ten. There are two Mahomes under eighteen dollars PSA tens. You know, one of them is the Contenders twenty eighteen ticket, just the regular base card. What, what I guess what I'm saying is, I think people look at these and just take it for granted and are like, okay, that's a ten dollar card, that's a fifteen dollar card, that's a twenty dollar card. Look, that's what it's all, that's what auctioning for now. I don't think you're going to see these. Like, I think if we were able to jump in our time machine to February, March of next year, and you really? did a PWCC weekly auction, and you did what we just did here, and you put in LeBron, PSA 10, you're not going to have a day before the auction ends, seven options, $18 or less. You have zero. You're not going to have Mahomes or Kobe because you know there's, it's a weird time, right? And, and what's funny about it is we call it like the junk slab era, right? But I'll put it to you. Is now – the time to take advantage of that junk slab era because now is the time where everybody's getting all of this stuff back and they're really just looking to liquidate because now they're being told before they were being told great everything right or at least that was the that was the way right and now they're being told you can't grade almost anything like you better look at the card it's got to be a psa 10 because they're not you're going to lose money on because of the grading fees you can't grade anything out of chronicles recon flux but you can't grade any of these things right face cards can't blah 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 so is now the time because people are being told that that they're getting this glut of cards back and they're just dumping them onto the market for lack of a better way of saying it it's now the time to pick up some cards psa 10 of a guy you collect because you're not going to have the opportunity to buy that type of a card. And, and I'm not just talking about like the, you know, the, the, the PSA 10s junk, you know what I mean? I'm talking about legit guys, you know, Patrick Mahomes and, and I, I, I think guess so page because like, right. I, I think the smart dealers right now, the ones that have distribution that are not able, that are not buying all of them to hold them that are buying some to either flip them or trade them or do stuff with. I do think so. And, and the reason, the reason I think that is, the average consumer might not have six to 12 to 15 hours a week to just browse PWCC or eBay, but specifically PWCC, right? Yep. And if you're curating cards and then doing Instagram stories, that $20 LeBron could get you a, an offer of 35 cash on, on your Instagram story just because it's it's a little bit easier. Okay, I'm on my story. I'll buy it, right? It, so I, I definitely do. I think it's a dealer's market right now. I think it's people with cash flow that are able to turn product – uh, turn slabs around could do really well in this market. I do. I think 
I think you're right. And I, I mean, look, that's for the flippers, but there are also collectors out there, right? And, you know, let's say you have a kid, right? You're listening to this now. You have a kid who likes Luca, but you were never able to get Luca cards. Do me a favor, okay? Type this in. 2019 Illusions Luca PSA 10 for me. All right? And I know, I, I, I know it's, yeah, the acetate. Remember we talked about those cards oh, I and I thought that. they were awesome little cards, right? So type that in for me. And I know it's not a rookie card. I know it's a second-year card. But take Clear a look. Yeah, pull pull that up, and it's the emerald version exactly. So so pull this one up and take a look at this card and show the front. It's nineteen dollars right now, and that's a really quick, cool. Go these ahead. cards look very different in hand. Yeah. PWCC scans. These are um, they're acetate. They're see through. So you'll see right here. Yeah, um, if you held this up against yeah. the light, you you see through it. And now now back out right and just I I I hope everyone's all right with just taking some time. Type this one in, and before you type. Uh, take a guess what this is. 2019 Prism Silver Luca PSA 10. What's that card going to sell for? That's a that's a the second year. 105 bucks. It's a $25 right now. So I don't know how long that type of card is going to stay in the range that it's at. And it might not remember. It's a day still to go in this auction. But at $25, that's a second year Luca Silver PSA 10. There are collectors of Luca who are going to try to buy all of his silvers. And this card is one for the flippers. It's one for the people who like Luca, who want to collect Luca. It's $25. I, these are the kind of cards people sent in in, in mass. And, 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 you know, it was Luca's second year. This is the same set that everybody was sending in 20,000 Ja and 20 million, you know, Zion. This one is, you know, it's a victim of that. But I have a feeling that in February, you look back and say, "Wow, I could have bought that card for twenty-five or thirty dollars." You know, it's one of those weird, you know, potential opportunities. And we, we we come on here and we quickly jump into like, "Wow, look at this LeBron that's twenty thousand dollars. Look at this Joe Burrow that's on it. That should be in Premier." Well, the weekly is a different animal entirely, and I think right now we have this unique, you know, uh, glut. There's a lot of stuff coming on weekly. You know, it's very. It's an interesting thing. I mean, I could be I could be dead wrong, but that was my take. You asked for my, my take on it. You know, it's a long take. I, I I think it's spot on, dude. It's what it's what I've been doing for the last four or five weeks. Um, I think so. There's data versus feel. There's a great follow. Pancake Analytics talks about this with data. He he, I don't I don't know what the data guys. Uh, he forecasted that basketball in the next three months would have the most run up. That's not surprising. Uh, that's what our gut would say, right? As we head into the NBA season, basketball has the most opportunity to run up, but he provided some data behind it. So I, I think buying basketball right now is very smart. I've been watching Cage, if we go player specific, mm -hmm. I, I've been watching finals games of LeBron, man. And and specifically, well, maybe it was Eastern Conference finals, LeBron uh, 2012 Heat versus the Celtics. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, man, the more I watch LeBron – He's ahead of Kobe. He's ahead of Kobe in my book now. And I, I think that what – as we look – because when you live through something, you're a bit more critical of it. Yep. When you look back on it, we start to dramatize it, right? Like oh, yeah. you kind of – you have these rosy glasses. And I do think that the hate that LeBron gets now politically will fade away. And what will be remembered is his greatness. And I'm sitting here thinking like I think – at Basically, any level of card above like the PS, whatever that stuff we talk about, under 500, 500 and up, I think there's opportunities with LeBron. I think people are, are dramatically underrating how we're going to look at him 10 years from now. Yeah, if we're going I mean, listen, for long term. I, I think most people say he's right up there with Jordan. That's one and two. I think Jordan's one. Zion, uh, you know, Le LeBron, I almost said Zion because um, I'm skipping forward in my brain to my next talking point. Uh, but LeBron is a two. And people love him, man. And he, he seems to be the kind of, of cat that's going to stay around for a, a longer time. He just signed a two year deal with a lot of money. You know, he's got two kids coming. And according to my son, Ian, it's not Bronny we should be worried about. What's, what's Bryce got, bud? He's got his own jumper. Yeah, he can create a shot. He's bigger. He's taller. He is. Ian was telling me, he's like, don't, don't worry about Bronny. Bryce, Bryce is the actual uh, James that's next. But here's what's fun. He's still playing at a high level, and he's playing, um, 
you know, he's playing these pro am games and subtly talking to Seattle where the games are about how he misses playing there. He hasn't played there in 15 years. Would you be shocked if LeBron brought a Supersonics franchise or a franchise into Seattle and he owned the good chunk of the team? Would that surprise you? It, it would not. And I think that's where he goes. Like, I think he's much more – like, he's thought of himself as an owner since he got into the league. I think that's part of the reason why he rubs people the wrong way. Like, Jordan was just a fantastic employee when he played. LeBron has always thought of himself as an owner. You know – do you know – do you feel yeah. like the mindset? No, but, I mean, listen, the mindset is – look, LeBron – LeBron thinks he can coach people. LeBron thinks he can GM people. I, I remember an interview with Michael Jordan where he said, I can't coach. Like, I can't coach because what I would I would expect people to deliver what I deliver, and that's unfair because no one's going to. Uh, so I would just destroy people. And he said it. I mean, I remember right. the interview. And so, I mean, you know your own self, right? LeBron's interesting, man, because, you know, he did in the finals when it counted lose more than he won. And that's an interesting thing. I don't want to become like a LeBron shill here. And you guys know I, I, I've said this as many times as I can. I started buying some LeBron stuff. I own um, you know, several LeBron cards, higher-end LeBron cards. Um, and I think, I, I think that narrative will remain but dim. That narrative will stay. And this is from someone who's not a LeBron guy ever. Mm -hmm. You guys remember some of my takes. We had like 100 comments on one take where I said LeBron doesn't make his teammates better. Um, yep. I think the criticisms of him will dim, will dim, and his accomplishments will shine brighter. I think that's I think how you're probably right. Him. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. So two things, and then we can jump into whatever it is you want to jump into because we're 20 minutes in. We have people who jog during these things, people who go on the treadmill. And, you know, I mean, sometimes yeah. we do shorter ones. One, without having to pay for it, if there was a smart person out there, and I'm shocked no one's done this yet, who watches our show, but wants like free publicity for whatever they do in the hobby. I mean, how come no one send me a humongous glass to drink out of yet? I mean, like if you're out there, like you got a, you got a company, you got to look at this. I, I got a Yankee cup from like four years ago. You know, the, the, the so ink's rubbing off. This send send Cage, me a cup. This is why Cage and I work. <laughs> Can I tell you the first thing that came to my, my head? That's a white space. Now the custom art should be put on things like that around the house. So people should have a Jordan Fleer cup. That's a PSA 10. Or a PMG cup. So my head went to, that's a white space. This is why we work, by the way, Luca Nation. I mean, come on now. I mean, look, I'm, I'm advertising a, an old Yankee cup here. And, it, I, and you guys know how that's much soda I drink. So that's not an one. advertisement. Number two. There's nothing on the cup anymore. It's <laughs> I know. It's, it's rubbing off. It's on my fingers. It's crazy. I got to yeah, stop drinking. Sure. So here you go. Right now. And guys, again, we have to do this. I, we can't do the show the minute the auction closes, because that doesn't provide the value to you about the show, right. right? So the prices may change between now when we're talking and the 24 hours you get to listen to this about the show. So please bear with us on this. But Andrew, a card you are very familiar with, because I believe that this card in your eyes is going to be thought of as more iconic than many other people, because it is the card that brought you in. It's the card that you started doing your, your hobby journey on. You're flipping. You're, I'm going to get into it. Do you remember how much you paid for your Zion base cards raw when you first started yeah. coming in? So, so you know what? So not only do I know that, I track base to see when it's gone below what I paid. So it just crossed that line. I, I was buying them at like 50 to 55. 50 to 55 Boy, bucks. So it's let me below ask, that now. What do you think right now? And there are, there are currently one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. PSA 10 prism base. There's a lot 10, of them. There are 10 base Zion prism. What's the lowest bid at right now? for the? And we're talking about it. Zion prism base rookie 2019 prism card number 248 in that PSA 10. Card. People were even making artwork of this card. 105 bucks is, is $46 is the card. And there are multiple at that price right now. And none of the 10 are bid up higher than $58 right now. Not a single one. Now, I know it's an auction. I know it'll change. Can I tell you but, guys something real quick about that? Sure. Sorry to cut you. I'm cutting yeah, Cage off a lot. No, no. Cool. When you see something like that, um, be a sniper, but you're not going to know which one of them to snipe. So what, what makes it difficult is, right, like let's say there's eight collectors who really want that card. They might bid it up to 105, and you might be able to steal the eighth one for like 93. And that's not even a big deal, but now you're – you know how we talk about entry being so important? You're able to get $12, which is 10, 15% savings. And that adds up over time. 
So with opportunities like that, you might be able to catch a straggler, as I call it. These are the cards, guys, that everybody was sending in, and everyone's getting back now on there. You know, they might not be as into the hobby as they were when they sent these in because it was a huge high, right? There are so many of these Zion prisms. You know, the blue green one, the uh, the choice prism, blue, yellow, green. Would you be so those are... if you bought the prism base ungraded for more than your PSA ten is selling for right now? No, you it, listen. We've had a lot of great people on. You know, and what they tell us makes sense. A lot of people have this, light, you know, Muhammad Ali type lesson, right? It's, I don't lose, I win or I learn. And if you're going to be in the hobby long enough, that is a learning lesson. I've I've taken my lumps, and guys, don't be like, oh, Cage, what an ass. You know, no one needs to lose money to learn. But I mean, like my perfect example, I bring it up all the time, is the the Pele rookie card that I bought in Golden Auctions when it was a pop <laughs> one, no, no, you know, none higher. I paid eleven thousand dollars for it, and the last one in that grade sold for three. Months so, later, I'm because if he feels bad that he bought a Zion base and graded for two hundred, and now it's but I want to show people that I'm actually losing money and it's legit money, and those are learning lessons. Now I know about when cards are coming out of the woodwork. New, I bought, I bought an eleven thousand so, dollar Pele. Dude, there are some, um, you know, some really nice that that Prism twenty nineteen. If you think that that is a relevant card, and you and I have done episodes about whether or not you know silvers. And base from that year are even investable, right? But if 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 you think that that card is, um, you know, something that you know where it, there are some there are some PSA ten silver Zions that are just not selling for as much. Um, you know, I know it's an auction, but what do you think the the job? <laughs> there's a oh sorry, Can there's a ja, No, no, it's fine, dude. Listen, it's supposed to be an interactive. There's a jaw prism silver PSA ten. The base silver, the actual one, not an insert to hold you. What do you think it's at right now? Ja. Six thirty four. Yeah, eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred dollars. And, wanna, the, and the, people the, don't realize the biggest benefit of base, though. Yeah. The benefit of base is not that you're getting a scarce item. The benefit of base is that you have liquidity. So every card has different benefits to it. So the benefit of base is if these guys do well, you're able to sell that card in seconds versus a one of one is a much more difficult sell. So your entry might be different, but your exit is easier. I think, you know, listen, I got to ask you something. Does art imitate life or does life imitate art? <laughs> what the fuck? So here you go. Pull up the auction for me and, and you, you tell me what comes first, the chicken or in this case, the bluebird or the egg. If you made Pokemon and you knew that Ja Moran, was a huge draw, right? And you know his okay. team colors were blue and stuff. Do we ever just type in the search function? All one word: C R A M O R A N T. C R A M O R. No, not Jamarant. Cromarant. <laughs> pull that up for me and let our folks. So in 2020, Pokemon came out with a, a Pokemon character. <laughs> Cromoran, exactly, buddy. Cromoran. I mean, you know, you want you want to be a fan of John Moran? Sure. But the funny thing is, he, it kind of looks like a pelican. You know, we've had we've had Luber on the show three times, guys. Cage pitches him Frism every time. Frism. This is this is right along the same line. This is Frism. It's the same. Oh, Cromoran. There he is, Cromoran. <laughs> Not John Moran, folks. Cromoran. You can find anything in the PWCC Weekly. Is the point of that. I know Cramorant. Thanks, buddy. He's correcting my he's correcting my pronunciation of him, but that's funny stuff. So, talk to me, man. We're a half hour into it. What do you like about this week's auction? <laughs> I tried not to tell people about all of the Michael Jordans that are available, um, you know, because there are some nice ones. Um, I got to tell you, there's a card that I had when I was a kid. I think I may still have it. Mine was way off centered. Just a real hard card to grade. It's a team leaders card. I love the Fleer team leaders. I, I collected those. They came out of rack packs, right, in football, basketball, baseball. There's a Jordan team leaders card. It's a weird picture. He's, like, kind of, like, kicking, you know. He's, like, getting a rebound and kind of, like, kicking the ball. This card was one of the first, like, like weird, rare inserts when I was collecting in the mid-'90s that, that ran up like crazy. What is it called? It's, team leaders? It's Fleer team leaders, 92. They started him in 92. This is the first one. Emmett Smith had a, a football one. It was black. Very tough grades because they were in rack packs and the blue corner would chip. You know, that card is just, it's a cool card. 
70 bucks in a PSA 8. That's wow. I mean, the, it's very rare. I think a PSA 10, like I don't, I don't, I haven't looked at this in a long time. It's just, you know, kind of one of those things that, that as I was scrolling, I saw this team leaders, like Griffey Green, if you happen to have a PSA 10, please send me a message. I think there's only seven PSA 10s of the Griffey one, Felia team leaders. I'm telling you, they came in rack packs, which are those three, you know, the, 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 the plastic ones where there's three sections. And this came in one of those sections. It was only available in a rack pack. Um, so interesting, just, you know, cool Jordan card that I mentioned. Shoot, what do you Honestly, see, man? Jordan, Jordan collecting is like its own – it's such an it's such an art. Like which base cards from the '90s matter? Like that. We, I, if you cover it, that up, that could have been a, your starting bid card. That that looks just like a million cards that don't even get bids on for Jordan. Right. Well, that's the thing, right? And it also depends on when you collect it. So 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 I understand the draw of a PMG. I understand the draw of these numbered Jordan cards later on. But when I collected that card, I just showed you. That was like the epitome of Jordan collectibles for me. That, the Scoring Kings card, which most people don't like. You know, it's the kids who collected in the late 90s, which was, I was already out in college and law school in the late 90s. I was doing different, you know, different different stuff. They love their version of the 90s. And, and I wonder if in five years, the, the people who are making money won't be exquisite fans and then in five years, if they're going to be national treasures from 09 and, uh, you know, 2012, you know, I mean, and then it's, you know, it's funny how it cycles like that, right? You talk to Mark Zablo, what does he love? He loves the Olympic stuff from 92, like I do. He loves, yeah. he loves the, the scoring kings. He loves that kind of stuff. People who are... Bleaker. He loves bleaker. <laughs> I got a tough question for you. Rate these quarterbacks in order from one to whatever in mm -hmm. investability. Herbert... Burrow, Mac Jones, Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Trey Lance, and Mahomes. Long term so investability or like buy now and flip where their prices are now. Which ones of them you would best card? It doesn't matter. I'll go. I'm a genie. I'll give you the exact card that you want. We'll decide that later. But just Mahomes. Of, number I one. I like Mahomes right now just because his card's been beaten up as opposed to all the other ones who have run up. And, and on the other end of the spectrum, Trey Lance. Um, I put him at the, 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 the worst because he hasn't Infinity shown one of one. Infinity. Yeah, and he hasn't shown anything. Dude hasn't played. I mean, I don't know preseason he'll look good. He's got a great offense and, and a great coach, and he should turn into something really good, but he literally hasn't done anything at all. Oh, I, I want to pause real quick because I want to go to the premiere. So uh, an XRC Burrow uh, gold PSA 9 sold for 15. How much should the 10 sell for if, if the 9 XRC sold for 15? I don't. I would have to look at the pops and the whole nine yards. I'd have to look. Some of them are two times. Some of them are five times. Five times more. Trey Lance two XRC. times. Trey Lance XRC just sold for thirty k for PSA ten. I mean that's a little nuts. People don't really so, love the XRCs, and they changed it up this year. By the way, select the XRC is not a redemption. It's actually in the packs. Is that right? So that's going to make it harder to get a ten because usually, like, it's like ninety five percent gem rate or ninety percent gem rate. I mean, I saw somebody pulled the one on one Kenny Pickett already. That's the select, though. Mm -hmm. Select, yeah. Oh, oh, Trey Lance was last year. Okay, so so you have uh, Mahomes number one, most mm -hmm. investable. He's been beat up twice, right? People yep. sold off for Mahomes, and he got caught up in like the market downturn. Yeah, and right near Lance, I'm going to put Trevor Lawrence because his prices are high, and he's still playing for the Jaguars. He's still in the AFC, which has all of these other quarterbacks that are obviously going to do better on better teams. Tua, I actually put kind of there also because while he has a good – you know, offense around them and Tyree Hill and the whole deal. I don't think Tua is that talented of a QB. And while his numbers might be better this year, it doesn't justify what people are paying for his prices. Um, I think, um, you know, as you continue up, people like um, if it's a, a one season or a quick like flip next couple of months, I might put under Mahomes somebody like Hertz because his prices are beat up a little bit. They're definitely not running anywhere near as much as like like Mac Jones. I'm going to put again with, with you know with these other guys, you know Mac Jones, he was great and as a rookie he took his team to the playoffs but didn't do much in the playoffs and uh, and and Devontae Parker addition matter not matter. It matters matter. for the five games that he'll stay healthy and cool. honestly I I'm a Devontae Parker fantasy owner many many years and he is he he is heartbreaking. I mean when he's on the field he's amazing but he's very rarely on the field healthy. Um, no, I bought a few, I bought two of his autos for forty bucks combined. 
listen, he'll start off the season hot. When he's healthy, he's great. And he, you know, he's full. So, so we have Trey, the worst investment, then Trevor, then Tua, then Mac Jones. Mahomes, number one. Hurts, just purely speculative short yeah, term. Yeah, exactly. Field, and I mean, you're, you're rounding Harlow, out that. I mean, Herbert. Fields just, the Bears are just not good. So, so Fields, but, but his cards are already low. So he's middle of the pack. You know, Herbert, Fields is just, you yeah, wouldn't put him on the list. I wouldn't, yeah. I mean, not investable, but beat up. I mean, he's investable because his prices are down. You know, like I probably, if you told me I have to invest in a, in one of these, I would probably put money in Fields before I put money in like Trevor Lawrence and Trey Lance at the prices Trey Lance is at right now. And I could be dead wrong. And I know people love Trey Lance. And if Lance comes out, you know, in the first two weeks and throws darts and is 2-0 and and has, you know, 10 touchdowns and no interceptions, a lot of people who bought now are going to sell. And maybe they make a little bit of money on it. But, you know, to me, that the upside there is just not enough to justify the potential downside right um and you know it, it's an interesting thing i'll round out the middle there with like burrow and herbert and those guys because i think that that they their prices are a little bit high and and obviously what i'm saying here is most of these guys i wouldn't invest in and here's why only one of them well two can make the super bowl because you have some nfc quarterbacks there but only one of them can get out of the afc i mean they're playing against each other right and you got to remember like the prices of these things, it's only going to make sense for the QB that has that crazy year. Herbert's prices took a little bit of a, of a dive last year because he didn't make the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like he was a little bit underwhelming. They're running up again because people think he's going to have the an MVP this year. But guess what? So are Josh Allen's cards. And people are paying a lot for Burrow because he already went to the 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 you know he already went to the promised land. He didn't win the Super Bowl, right? But he already went there, and people are expecting a, a repeat performance. It can't happen for all those. And Mahomes' prices, while they're down, are still high, and expecting an MVP type season and playoff success for him too. There's there's too many. There will be winners. There are people who are betting on quarterbacks now who will win, but there will be more losers. That's just math, right? There's a horse race, right? If you, you can't bet on every horse. One horse will win, and maybe you can make money also picking the second place horse. But there are going to be horses that get hurt. There are going to be horses that don't finish the race. There are going to be horses that don't do what you think they're going to do, and you will lose your money on it. It's the same kind of thing, right? Only one horse can win that race. Um, I, I think we're going to find out this year that that horse is going to be Mahomes. Okay, maybe. But you're put, you're making your bet on Mahomes, and why I put him first is because his cards are in the same range and maybe even cheaper than some of these other guys that haven't done anything. And he's already won an MVP in a Super Bowl. So, so the downside card, is less for him. So this card, I want to show you guys, uh, put your attention on this card. So I, this isn't my actually favorite optic design, but I think what you get with this card is sort of unrealized right now. And I'm really interested to see where this ends because the last sale, shout out to the Wharf Sports Cards when he ran his consignment business, uh, according to, to PSA, was 12-24 of last year sold for 10,000 bucks, okay? This card right here. Yep. But I don't know I don't know if this is revered yet as a color match cage. It doesn't look like it's a color match, but it is in fact a color match, right? I mean, yeah, it looks like you got some red, right? You got some red well, on it, right? Well, it's, so. it's straight red, numbered out of I mean, 99. It's a gorgeous card. There's 34 PSA 10s and usually it's color match like the Luca, it's all blue around here. This is distracting because it has that like light blue. But the more I see these optics from 2017, the more I like them. This is a card I would really take a look at. I mean, I think you're probably correct. 34 PSA 10s, Cage. What else we got before we wrap? 38 minutes in. Well, what do we got? I got a bunch of stuff, but no, we did this backwards, right? So let's get into let's get into my world, my stuff. There was a gorgeous 48 leaf Jackie Robinson in this auction. Right. Oh. I mean, there's there it's a gorgeous card. And, you know, while vintage cards have been running up, you name it. This, I mean, come on this. As people start buying and moving into the right stuff, I this is not exactly the rarest card in the world, especially in mid to lower grades. But there's not enough of Jackie Robinson rookie cards, which this is his best card. The 48 leaf, the yellow one to go around. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous card. Um, sticking with vintage. If you are a mantle chaser and you don't want to buy the 52 tops that is now getting crazy, there's a really nice 59 PSA 8 in this auction. High grade mantles in any years. We've talked about this. People are chasing mantles. People, you know, they build verticals. The one from 59 is a really nice card. 1959 tops mantle. It's card number 10. 
in PSA 8. Just a real nice, you know, uh, middle of his career, um, you know, because he has cards all the way up to 69. So, you know, there's mm-hmm. 10, more, 10 more years after this. And one I'd like to have you chime in on, right? Um, 1968, PSA 5. Go ahead and pull this one off for me and tell me why this is great, right? Whether you are a collector of this sport or not, it's a sticker, right? And high grade, World Cup is coming. He was the best World Cup player in 1974. This is a Cruyff rookie card. Gorgeous card, right? Tell me about this. Tell me why this is a buy or not a buy. Dude, you're Gunner, a soccer guy. You Gunner, would be, Gunner would be a better a better guy to go to. I, I'll tell you, people love Cruyff, and people have been buying Cruyff, which is very interesting because I, I would not think that most of the soccer collectors know soccer history that well. You know, but I mean, no they do they follow play. the hey, basketball. People were buying the current stuff, and they went back and bought Lou Alcindor, and they went back and bought the, the greats. Baseball, people were buying the modern stuff. They were buying Tatis. They went back, and they looked for Mantle and Jackie Robinson. The, it's the same thing. The thing that I need to remember is we always judge things by, like, modern-day demand, mm-hmm. but that's a scarce card. Right, it doesn't. You don't need millions of people to know about Cruyff because if a thousand people want to collect Cruyff and there's only a hundred cards, that's the the ratio, the equation you're looking for. Because there's, of course, there's more people who want to collect Zion, but they have twenty thousand of his cards to buy. Mm-hmm. So there might be a less of a market for Cruyff, but there's less available supply too. So, so you, you that uh, are you are you about? So I love it. I love your analysis. One of the things you said is we compare it to modern day demand. I'm going to blow up someone. Someone's going to be looking sure, at being mad, it. but I'm going to blow up myself too because I was actually thinking about bidding on this card myself, right? Is there anything in, in demand more right now in the hobby than Logo Man cards? I think Logo especially, Man was so last month. Especially because they are game worn. So do me a favor and pull this card up because it's not the kind of card you expect to see in the weekly. And it's a Logo Man one of two, which is interesting, right? It's not a one of one Logo it. Man. But, but 2015 National Treasures. Logo man, pull that up for me and see what you like. To me, I think this is a cool card of a guy who is not yet appreciated in the hobby. It's, it's weird because of the team the jersey's from, but yeah, pull up. Look at that. Look at all these logo man cards here. But I like the Vinsanity BGS 95. Pull that one up. Isn't that a nice card? But if you flip it over, guess what team they put him on? I remember, he played for a long time, so there's gonna be a lot of teams. Played on the Raptors, it's a Grizzlies. Oh. Grizz. <laughs> people nice that card, are my right? age, the thing is, people that are my age know T Mac, they know Vince Carter, and they know Kobe. They know that Vince had way more talent than both of them, but achieved way less. And I think that's difficult to get that out of our brain. All right. I mean, the, the negative on this card for me, although I love it, come on, it's game-worn, Vince Carter logo, man, you know, it, yeah, and you're not paying a million dollars for it, clearly, is the, the double knock, right? The best thing, you, you're right, he, he, he did less with the talent than the other two guys, but the best thing was, if you're a fan from Canada, uh, he turned Toronto into a hoop city, right? He brought basketball to Canada. Sure. So now you have a logo man on a team that was from Canada and left. Oh, Vancouver Grizzlies. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so it's like a, like a negative there. One yeah. of the logo men was Cam Reddish. And you remember how I felt about Cam Reddish in the beginning. Yep. Super overrated. But I'll tell you, man, if there's one guy who I think is slept on, it's him now compared to where people are pricing him. He's a thir- – I think it was the third pick or maybe the fifth pick. He's still incredibly talented. And I'm interested to see how his game develops. Like – I'm not saying to invest in Cam Reddish, but his market has fallen off of a cliff. His current logo, man, is 300 bucks right now, Cage. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I got a couple cards, but I do – I know we're getting long on the episode, but it, maybe we'll spend two minutes on this. Just like now everything's coming back from PSA and there's a glut, is now the time to maybe buy quality sealed wax when there's all the drama and maybe a little bit of fear – about that and, and listen to where I'm going on this. There's a lot of football sealed wax in this weekly auction, including Topps Chrome box from Manning's and Moss's rookie year. So if you type in Topps Chrome sealed and check out your ticket, you'll see the box on there. You can see some other, there's plenty of sealed stuff. And 
you know, while somebody is out there probably, you know, you know they probably don't forge singles. They forge a $100 bill, right? So, yeah, people mess with 86 Fleer boxes. Yeah, people mess with first edition Pokemon boxes. They're high level. They're expensive stuff. But, but chances are the Topps Chrome box that we're looking at here in this auction, is it's not something that a lot of scammers have opened and tried to reseal. There's probably not a lot of profit in that as opposed to these $100,000, $200,000 boxes that, that we're talking about. So is now a time to maybe take advantage of a little bit of fear and buy some quality sealed wax like the ones that are in this auction? What do you think? So I'm not – here's what I think. And I thought I was going to say this in the beginning, but I'm glad we came back to it. I think – so I've been tra- buying on eBay a little bit more now that I've noticed PWCC was saturated. And I'm like, this is fucking chaos. There's so many listings, different photos. You don't even know if the descriptions are accurate. It's it's a crapshoot to navigate. And I'm like, wow, the lessons and learnings that I have from watching PWCC weekly auctions for the last month, two months, has helped me really kind of navigate, right, and focus. This is what I need to go after. This is what I shouldn't. Right, it kind of hones that like detector of yours. What I would do is I would for one or two weekly auctions, if you want to get into wax, like all the wax and watch how it trades, watch how it moves, watch how it does an extended bidding. Extended bidding is really important because what you get to see is true demand, right? If it goes for a few extended bidding, that means that there is a lot of demand for a product and people bidding against each other, right? If it ends like this, there's no demand. Right. So it might have ended well, but the next time there's again no bidders and, and it ends lower. So what I would do is I would watch a new segment of the market before jumping in. And I think PWCC with their search functionality and their tech makes it way easier than any other platform to do that. It's almost like um, buying cards and wax with training wheels. I think I you're think- probably right. I think you're right. But so here, here's some fun. Uh, a couple more that we can touch on and then we'll wrap it up, right? You know, Jordan Autos, especially on card and you name it, um, they've carried their value over time. I mean, they continue Jordan to carry Farmer. value. Jordan yeah. Farmer Autos? So, yeah. So, I guess the equivalent in football is Tom Brady. Can yes. you pull up the 2014 Flawless Brady Auto out of 25? I was going to ask is, you about that. Did you see the Flawless Brady sale on Premier? 200 No, tell me about it. Wow. It's nice. I, I couldn't understand it. I'll pull, I'll pull the card up here in a second. So this uh, is just an on-card Tom Brady Flawless Auto from 2014 Flawless. It's in a BGS 9 holder when we, when, we, when we find it. And I guess my thought here is it's not a patch auto, just but it's an on-card Brady Auto. you got to imagine he's not going to be showing up at the National selling his autograph in the future. I think, you know, he's he's made his money, and now when he's finished playing football, he's going to make $375 million more with a 10-year contract to be, you know, uh, a spokesperson on, I think it's Fox, right? I mean, he's going to be doing the games, um, doing, like, commentary. He, he's not going to need to sell his autograph, and I imagine, you know, his autograph, especially on card, will be very difficult to obtain. Is now a time to maybe start looking at on card Brady autos like Flawless? Everybody loves Flawless already because it's you know usually game used and on card. Um, yeah, so that's one right there. Obviously, the one I'm talking about doesn't have a patch, but it's a fraction of the price. Right. Well, well I, dude, these are all connected in a lot of ways, right? Like, I was surprised to see a non rookie Flawless Brady sell for this amount of money. Cage, it's a nice auto. It's a nice I mean, auto. It's, it's a not a lot of on-card Brady autos. That's part, you know, part of what the deal is, well, right? It's and a supporting argument for what for the play that you gave with the the Brady flawless um, no patch, but BGS nine. It's a supporting argument for that, don't you think? Yeah, because you're getting it at a significant discount. But there's a you know there's obviously it's a man for nice Brady autos at a high price point. And guys, this is not a cheap card, obviously, but it's nowhere near. We're talking about a, a couple of percent of what the, the one just sold for in Premier. So anyway, it's just one. Um, I'd be remiss. Let's stay with football. I have three more cards to go over. Jesus. One football and two basketball. So we just really quick. I don't know if you are a Tua um, fan, but with shields and all those things going for crazy prices, you know, people like laundry tags. I'm like, you know, there's a Nike swoosh. You can see it. It's right there. 
It's the 2020 Flawless Tua Nike Swoosh Patch Auto 1 of 1 in a BGS 9 holder. You got it right there. I mean, it's it's you can pull it up if you want. What's the price on that? I mean, is this a plan B type of, you know, type of play for people who are um, not willing to pay for the shields? The Nike Swoosh 1 of 1? I mean, a fraction of the price? Just a it's cool a card in the week. Card. It's a gorgeous card. And in basketball... We talked about LeBron early. Uh, do me a favor and just type in 2005 out of 29. Just like slash 20 or just 2005, 29, and it should pop up. There it is. So this is the 2005 finest gold X-Fractor LeBron in a BGS 9.5. I mean, you want to talk about a card that checks a lot of boxes, right? It is a GOAT LeBron. Premier set Right, one of the one of the chromes, you know, one of the early ones, and a gold parallel in gem mint condition. Not a cheap card, but what are your thoughts about this one, my friend? I, I like the golds that are in like with the little squares. I think those like select uses that too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a fan. I think it looks cool. Last one. This is your guy. You know, so let's bring you know, it home. You know, our our boy Slabstock pulled the card number yeah, twenty three, the, the jersey number one. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. All right, what's the last one? Kate? Last one for you. Iconic set, iconic player, your favorite. 2003 exquisite Kobe. Kobe. There is a, I mean, as iconic set as it comes, it's from the 03 exquisite set. It is a three-color patch, right? And the auto is not running off the card, which happens with his stuff pretty often. Mm -hmm. This is the 03 exquisite Kobe Bryant patch auto out of 100. That's that's because they had a sign. It's a difficult. Oh, that's that's a goal. Is that nice patch, right? Wow. Click it up. Click it. Click it. Click it and let it. That's just like an optical illusion. Yeah, because it's got a lot of like layers to it. It's a because really I nice. I this was an L, and then I'm like, wait, right. <laughs> really nice three color patch. The auto is nice, right? I mean, the auto is really not running off the card. Grades. A nine five. These are really tough subgrades. Yep. So this is a cool card. What do you think, man? I will shut up and I'll let you talk about it. I mean, it doesn't get much crazier than Kobe. They gave it a nine auto, even though it's not running off the card. I, I don't know why. But yeah, you see the nine auto on this. So that obviously may you know hinder hinder the uh you know the pricing a little bit. You might be able to get that card, which is Beckett, sick. Beckett, Beckett is clueless on auto grades. Did you see the oh. Luca Ted auto grade? Mm -hmm. You saw it, right? The one that th th didn't even connect. Yeah. So, what do you think about that card? Quick. I'd buy it. Yeah. All right. That's what we want to hear. I'd buy it. Just you know, guys, we spent about half the show talking about bargain shopping here, and then we also have on the other side. But what's funny is there is a fluffy middle, right in there <laughs> between those eighteen dollar PSA tens and these ten thousand dollar you know Kobe autos. To it. there's a lot of fun stuff. You could spend from now the next twenty four hours until the auction ended. And browsing the auction and not see every card that's in it. There's so much cool stuff. See what you can pick up. Uh, we hope you enjoy these episodes, the PWCC kind of like pre stuff. A lot of people out there doing post auction shows. We do the pre auction, and I had a lot of fun with it. Did yeah, me too, man. And National Treasure Series, it's like a it's like a snowball, right? In the beginning, after national viewership is down, we're hitting record listens. We're back to oh, yeah. where we were. People love the series. Um, very, very excited for you guys to listen to like the final, I think maybe 12 to 15 episodes. Yep. And September, kids are back in school, economy opens up, whatever it means. You know what I mean? Like everyone goes away for summer and then after Labor Day, we're back at it. So very excited for this next, as Cage called it, fiscal year of cards. You know, <laughs> from August to August, national to national, AC to Chicago. Um I've gotten to know more of you guys in the last two months than I have in the previous two years, which is exciting. We're gearing up to do more cigar nights, more events, more of that stuff. So stay tuned. Um, I'm off to do my whatnot show. Luca Nation, we love you. Cage, you're a legend. See you guys tomorrow. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So... As a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month. And many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in, to go ahead and give back to our community. 
as people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send five, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC. And I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards. So you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me. And I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a P.O. box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday and gives me a day to prep. And it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card. Simple as that. And the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is. 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number, 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.